through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 258. I'm Spencer, and today I'm joined by a special guest host because Greg is off on holiday. Oh, if he wants holiday, to say saying yeah. fancy. Uh, Ben Kendrick, you might know him from Screen Rant. He's been on the MacGuffin Audio Podcast several times. Familiar face around these parts. Um, but we're going to give you our DVD rundown for this week, as always. It's kind of, I guess, a decent week. I mean, there's some TV, some Criterion, some Shout Factory, you know. Kind of a... <laughs> I like Shout Factory. They do some pretty good... A little good bit of movies. column A, a little bit of column yeah, C. Yeah, very much yeah. too. Yeah. But uh, not, not like a huge, noteworthy release week. There's no, like, you know... Um, Iron Man 3 or something right. to headline the Cloud week. Cloud Atlas. Exactly, yeah, there's yeah. nothing big. Uh, the first one I want to talk about this week is Longmire, uh, the complete first season. For those who don't know, this is a show on, I believe, A&E. It's produced by Warner Brothers. It's, I mean, I guess sort of a cop procedural type show, but set in sort of... I think it's set in like Wyoming or sort of the back country. And the reason that it's sort of noteworthy to me is for two reasons. Um, number one, it's got Katie Sackhoff in it. So it's our first like series post uh, Battlestar. Battlestar. Yeah. And it has Lou Diamond Phillips. And it's just because it's <laughs> fucking Lou Diamond Phillips. How's that yeah. not awesome? Like I'm always pro Lou yeah. Diamond Phillips, you know, Young Guns. Yeah. Thank you ever for being in my heart for that one. Yeah. Um, but I guess it's based on a series of novels by Craig Johnson. I've never read any of those novels. I hear good things about the novels. The show itself is fine. Yeah. I mean, it's the it's a procedural cop show. I mean, so it's sort of like feel like a fairly limited range in terms of quality. But you know, it's it's a decent show. Yeah, I have a friend who's apparently a character in one of those shows, and really? I'm, I'm not sure which one it is. But like, they know the guy who wrote the wow. novel. They know Craig. So it's like they were like written in as a character. But That's I pretty cool. I, don't, I've never been able to figure out which one though, but which yeah. one is your friend? Yeah, I don't oh yeah, know. that's funny. But yeah, um, you know, in terms of the release, it's kind of shitty. Like it's only available on DVD. Yeah. Like yeah. how in a modern age could you not release it on Blu-ray? <laughs> I mean, this is a show that was filmed last year. Yeah. Like it's out currently. Um, Do you think so, it's to keep like costs down? Like because at a DVD, maybe. you know, it's like they throw it out there for like. $20 for Maybe. season worth. I, I, would, I, would, I would say there's some credence to that theory because yeah. in terms of special features, there's gallery of still photos, <laughs> unaired scenes, and the slow burn shooting Longmire featurette. So that's it. So that's nothing. all the features. Yeah. I, I mean, for me, like none of those featurettes are really that exciting. So here's the other weird thing. It's available, and this again might add credence to your theory, it's available streaming HD from Amazon. But Interesting. yeah, like that's it. Maybe iTunes too has it, but like, it, it, I guess it speaks to it's cheaper to just throw it out there streaming yeah. than to make a Blu-ray. I wonder. I mean, I wonder what the like added cost of actually like making a Blu-ray versus a DVD. I would think it'd be pretty cheap. Yeah. But I mean, I guess if it's like A and E, yeah, like they're like, eh, we got a very limited market for this thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> it's yeah, it's not. I'm kind of surprised. I mean, because people watch Longmire, though. I mean, not a ton of people no. watch it, but like the other thing that's sort of weird about it is so this is the week of May 28th that this is all coming out. Right. Season two premieres May 27th. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, like if you're trying to get people into your new, why would yeah. you? release it after the first episode airs it's like they think that the only people that would buy that dvd are everybody that's already seen it and that's a select group of people who are too cheap to like pay for yeah a like seriously it's just it's was, it was just like yeah you're under like, like that's it's all it makes no sense to release it after your season begins like yeah. what are who like you want to get that market of like people are like oh i missed that the first time the new season's coming let's go like if for me i'd be like fuck this i don't want to watch it like yeah. i've already missed one season why am yeah. i gonna just jump into this new one right and granted it's a cop show so like like, how much are you really missing? Right. But yeah. anyway, so that's that's TV show number one that we're going to talk <laughs> about this week. TV show number two, sort of interesting, also also available only on DVD, but this time it's Beetlejuice, the complete series from Shout Factory. You yeah. know? Uh, this is the cartoon version of the classic movie, which is kind of funny 
in the context of the movie, because the movie is more about Beetlejuice and Alec Baldwin and Gene Davis. Right. Whereas the TV show is about uh, Beetlejuice and Lydia. Right. Who's played by Winona, right. Winona Ryder in the movie. So it's like, we're going to take this sort of side character, make her one of the main characters in this TV show, and make what was kind of a villain in the movie into like a kind of comedic <laughs> hero. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's just sort of like the thing that always amazes me of like, I guess it's true of cartoons now, but especially like late 80s, early 90s, all that sort of TV, uh, cartoon stuff. They did, a uh, show ran from 89 to 91. They did 94 episodes. Jeez. <laughs> they just cranked that shit out. Like, they must have been working like 365 yeah. on that show. That's crazy. That's crazy. And this release is very peculiar for two or, or a few reasons. Number one, as I said, only a DVD. Right. Number two, only available at Amazon for the complete series. You can get season one in a variety of places, but complete series, only Amazon. It really yeah. fell off after that, after yeah. that first it's, series. It's just, like, I think they're, no, they're releasing season one and a complete series at the same time. Right. But for whatever reason, complete That's series so is weird. Amazon exclusive. Yeah. I mean, probably where they're going to sell most of them, yeah. realistically. But even still, it's just sort of like, why? I mean, unless Amazon paid them a ton of money, I, yeah. just, I don't Which, understand like, the advantage. Can you imagine Amazon paying them a ton of money for that cartoon series? Yeah, not, not likely. But I do remember that series. I, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it, it a lot. That and the real Ghostbusters yeah. were the two I liked a lot yeah. back in the day. And it's kind of funny because they're both about ghosts. But. Yeah. I can't imagine like recommending anybody go pick this up unless you like did watch it and remember that but See, I, here's the thing like, that sort of adds insult to injury um you can get the complete series 94 episodes that's a good chunk of it you know yeah. that's uh, uh 12 discs yeah i mean it's a good chunk of stuff considering they're probably half hour cartoons yeah. 20 minute cartoons but it has no special features for shout factory a, a, a group that's like i don't know besides perhaps criterion they are one of the best at doing yeah. special features and special features on stuff that's usually not major releases yeah like what why a n- n- complete series and you're just like phoning it yeah, in? Yeah, like, that's pretty weird. I mean, so unless you're like a die-hard Beetlejuice the cartoon <laughs> series, it seems kind of hard to imagine yeah. wanting anyone to buy this. Like, so if you were really jazzed about that Beetlejuice sequel that they've been talking about, yeah, in this Hawaii, is, yeah, <laughs> it was Hawaiian or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just it's. It's a peculiar one. I, I like. I, I probably would be willing to rent it at like Scarecrow, but yeah. I'd find it really hard to justify spending seventy dollars on a cartoon series I haven't seen in twenty years yeah. with no special features, and I am not entirely positive I would still enjoy as yeah. an adult. So I was looking to see over on the shelf over here if there was Beetlejuice in VHS, but all I'm seeing is Better Than Sex, <laughs> which is probably just as good. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, it's more age appropriate for us. These yes. Days, I yeah. Guess. Probably. Um, though that makes me wonder if there's like any sort of like jokes I didn't get as a kid in Beetlejuice. Because yeah, I mean, the movie true. definitely at a couple levels. It's pretty working. raunchy. Yeah. yeah. So definitely who knows? Uh, we're going to venture into the indie realm here and probably one that not a lot of people saw, but I surprisingly reviewed, and that was a film called Hellbound with a question mark. Want to make sure we get out there. Um, in essence, this is a film sort of questioning the different interpretations of what hell is, you know from different religions and uh, different sort of theories about how people get to heaven and hell and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I'm not a particular religious dude, so this probably is a lot of uh, less intense for me than a lot of people, but I got to appreciate some of the people that they had. um, Some of them I recognize, but the most noble one I did recognize was Mark Driscoll from the Mars Hill Church, which is one of those, you know, branded churches yeah. across mm-hmm. America. Super mega churches. Exactly, yeah. So they, they're everywhere, and he's sort of gained a lot of notoriety for that. And, you know, it's it's kind of interesting to see the different sort of interpretations of, like, you know, is, like, hell uh, punishment? Is it sort of like, is there no afterlife? It's sort of like all the perspectives some people believe, you know, if you everyone gets there eventually it just depends on how long sort of the different yeah. interpretations of it and i kind of i kind of dig that and i gotta say the guy who directed kevin miller really went and talked to some legit sources for his movie so you know i might not be the most passionate about the subject matter of the movie but he got people who were to speak on it right. which i appreciated so it's kind of an interesting film um definitely a heavy topic one so if you're not particularly religious or you don't really care about heaven or hell probably one you might want to skip but (laughs) strangely enough this is probably one of the uh most special feature laden ones we're going to talk about today because it has 
interview outtakes which could be very interesting for a yeah. subject like this right. like I, I i don't know if someone's like what could you slip up and like mispronounce or yeah. something like that i'd be curious about that there's a, a director's commentary which i'm always amazed like like beetlejuice you couldn't get anybody right. from the cast like yeah. i'm pretty sure none of those people are working anymore yeah. like or so, most of them aren't. Or it's like Frank Welker was one somebody, of the people yeah, around. Like, <laughs> it's like, some, it's still around. Dude. Somebody's <laughs> got to be around to say something about yeah. it. And it's sort of like, you got at least a, a director's commentary on an indie film. So come on, if they're yeah. doing that, uh, you got to step up your game. And then there's a Hell and Back featurette, which I presume is sort of about the process of uh, going out and discussing this and coming yeah, back and seeing what you it. feel like yeah. after all that. But uh, again, you know, this only comes in DVD or Blu-ray. Like, it is a week for not um, comprehensive editions. There's no digital yeah. copies. There's no DVD, Blu-ray combos. Huh. Like, so, I don't know why. Would but. you say H Hellbound great first date movie is that what yes if your first date is very religious <laughs> that might be the perfect tone it's to like say. being thrown into the deep end right yeah. like oh, that's yeah. one of the things you're not supposed to talk about on a first date so i mean if, yeah you know if you just want to like disqualify someone immediately or you're you are a religious or person you're really to really like connect like yeah. this might be the or point. if uh you're really attracted to somebody who's super religious and you want to look oh, like you're yeah, super sure, religious sure. Like, like yeah it's really great yeah, exactly i saw this little movie about hell i figured you know yeah. spirituality is important to me <laughs> as it is to you we figure we'd just yeah. watch this and watch some stupid yeah. folks burn in hell you right. know so uh yeah you know very specific first date movie but yeah. potentially a first date movie Nevertheless. Yeah. Uh, finally, I figure we're going to end on a sort of positive note being a Criterion release, and we're going to talk about Life is Sweet. This is the film by Michael Lee. You might know him from, let's see, Secret and Lies or Vera and Drake, or sorry, Vera Drake. Right. Not Vera and Drake. <laughs> That's a very different. Vera and Drake, one. the sitcom. Yeah. Yeah. Was it uh, Drake and uh, whatever on the Disney Channel? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Not that one. Different, very different movie. Vera Drake. <laughs> um, but, you know, Academy Award nominated guy. Yeah. This is sort of his first international hit uh, about a family living in London and sort of the family conflicts and um, love is the subject of the film. As always, you know, it's a Criterion release, so you're going to get, let's see, a new commentary from Mike Lee, uh, an audio rec recording of a 1991 interview at the National Film Theater in London, which is pretty cool because the film came out in 1990. Yeah. So this is before, you know, he's Mike right. Lee, like a big right. sensation. So I'd be kind of curious to see his perspective at that point or, you know, if it's just sort of first international hit, what that experience would be like as sort right. of a Break young out. filmmaker. Yeah. Um, it additionally has five short films written and directed by Michael Lee for a proposed TV series called Five Minute Films huh. uh, with a new introduction for Michael Lee. So it's it's cool to see there's sort of like uh, more of that sort of early work of his, sort yeah. of give more perspective of what was to come later and sort of, you know, the hits that were to come, if yeah. you will, I mean. We're not talking like Transformers type hits, but <laughs> yeah. critically acclaimed, he's been a fairly yeah. successful guy. Um, so, you know, that's cool. And a new 2K digital transfer, which is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, supervised by the director of photography this time, interestingly oh. enough. Not the director, as they usually do. But yeah. Probably a good person to bring in for yeah. that. So, you know, I'm a big Criterion fan. I can't say I'm like an expert on Michael Lee, um, or Mike Lee, as you might call him. Um, but he's definitely an interesting film, definitely a very influential filmmaker. And it's sort of cool to see that sort of foundation type yeah. stuff. And Criterion puts together a very good release. I mean, I still don't understand why they don't do like Blu-ray DVD combos or even digital copies yeah. to include because you know they'd be awesome, but you know, yeah. nevertheless, it's a good release. Yeah. So, uh, that brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, join us next time as Ben and I are going to talk about M. Night Shyamalan in honor of the release of After Earth. Woo. There'll be a twist, too. For yeah, sure. exactly, yeah. We'll, we'll, you'll never yeah. see it coming. Yeah. <laughs> um, we won't review the film, actually, or we yeah. won't talk about it at all. We're yeah. going to set it up we're, to talk about it, and then we yeah. won't mention it at then all. Then we're just going to talk about Bruce Willis for exactly, like two yeah. and a half that hours. That would be yeah. the shock. Um, but as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip. We're on Miro. We're on Roku. You can check in at Get Glue. You can leave us reviews on on iTunes, comment on our YouTube page. We like to go back and forth with y'all on there, and uh, we'll see you next time.